Hey everybody, Tim again, Tim's Computer Repair. How's everybody doing today? Right here, I've got an HP Pavilion all-in-one computer that I think I am pretty confident has got a hard drive issue. I uh, would most definitely uh, sounds like it according to what the customer is explaining to me. This is model 24-B016. I have it all plugged in, ready to go. And this is an HP, so the good thing about an HP is, is before I even do anything, I am going to go ahead and power it on and press Oh, I don't even have to do anything. Look at there. Smart has been triggered. It says hard disk 2. That's interesting. Let's just look at a bit of system information here. See if we can... Uh, uh, look at there. Smart imminent failure hard drive. So we're going to have to take this apart. I'm going to have to pull the drive. She needs data off of that. So this is as far as I'll go with as far as booting this up anymore. We're going to shut it down and I'm going to go ahead and take this all in one apart. And we're going to see if we can pull data from it. Okay everyone, the first thing we're going to do is lay this guy down. I got a nice soft material here to lay the glass down. I'm going to go ahead and unplug everything here first. Get that out of the way. And the first thing that we notice here is that there are some, looks like some hex screws here. Yeah, it looks like there's some hex type screws here that need to come off because we need to remove this base. So let me see what I got to remove that with. Okay, I'll tell you what I had purchased here. This is a really good uh, little kit here by Mulwark. I guess that's how you pronounce it. This is a 20 piece hex head Allen wrench drill bit set. And this is to be better than using Allen wrenches. It, it takes the place of using Allen wrenches. Standard sizes to your metric sizes comes in, comes in really handy with little jobs like this. They fit all of my screwdrivers. Uh, it's got all of them have the base. Uh, this typical that you see on for you know screwdrivers where you can swap out attachments, drills. We could also use these in, in screwdrivers like I want to show you here. Okay, you could use an Allen wrench here to get these screws out. I am going to use just a regular ratchet from my, from my trusty old socket set that I have uh, with an attachment here that allows me to use whatever size of these that I, that I need to use. So let's see which one this looks like maybe... That's the one. So we're going to go with a 2.5 size here. So you can use the equivalent Allen wrench or what have you. Pop that into my socket set here, my socket wrench. I'm going to get these started. Alright, once I have them loose like that, just go ahead and take them, take them out by hand now. There's four of them to take out. They look like that. Okay, after that the stand comes right off, no problem. Stand this up. Okay, once you stand this up on, on the uh, top end here, next to the power button, you'll see a, a rubber stopper here that's hiding a screw. And it's actually the same thing on the other side. Just pop that off like that. 
That'll expose the screws. I'm going to use my ratchet here with a flat head on the end of it to turn these screws a quarter of a turn counterclockwise. And you notice how that opens up a gap right there. And that's what we want to see. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. These are pretty tight, so it's kind of hard to do with a regular screwdriver. And that's probably all you need to have to do right there, just enough gap here to get another tool in to kind of pry things on open. Plastic pry tool here. As you can see, that seems to come off and unsnap fairly easy all the way across. Go back to this corner here. There we go. Just got that to kind of crack off like that a little bit. Take your time with it. As you see, it just kind of unsnaps as you run your plastic tool down it. It comes across just like that. Really these screws are only meant to get things started. One quarter turn and it'll pop out like this. You don't want to do any more with them. You kind of want to work the sides. You don't want to use anything metal. Plastic pry tools is really all you want to use to get this going. Once you get it to a certain point like that, you kind of lay it down. Kind of work at it from there. So you want to be careful because there is a ribbon cable or there is a cable that's attached to this CD drive here. Gently lift it up and then you can deroute this cable. Kind of give yourself a little bit more play. Something like that there. And now that exposes our hard drive. Now, obviously this is a hard drive. It, this would run a lot better if it had an SSD installed in it. And that is one thing that I'm, I'm going to push her to have with this computer. We need to extract this hard drive and see if we can get data off of it. Okay, there's SCA screw here on the very top. It's going to take out. Slide this cage up. You can probably go ahead and disconnect this cable. This comes right out like that. And there she is. She has a one terabyte blue SSD, probably the original. So we can figure out a way to get a, it looks like it has holes actually already to install a 2.5 inch drive. So that is perfect, I think. Now that this is out, let's see if we can get any data off this drive. Okay, luckily this drive has mounted on my bench computer here, as you can see. Lovely, I see the user's folder. We're going to go ahead and go into there. There's my customer's name. And we'll go ahead and hopefully uh, get this mounted. Okay, so I went ahead on another drive on this computer that I have for all of my uh, data recoveries or data transfers for customers. I created a folder with my customer's name on it. And it's all ready to transfer data. Just as soon as her drive here populates, I'm going to immediately go in and start pulling data across because who knows how long this drive is going to let me do that since it is failing. Okay, so it's great. So we've got that drive to populate. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling these folders right over. Here goes the documents folder. I'll pull it over to the folder I've created on my known good drive here on my bench computer. Now I know I could be pulling this over on my network, network attached storage box. I could be pulling this over onto an external, uh, external drive via USB 3. Uh, I want to go the quickest, quickest route, which is from drive to drive directly to the motherboard. And we got a problem here already. Can't read from the source disk. Not good. I'll say skip. All right, it's going to go ahead and read some more. So it's 
one or two items there that it couldn't get. Go down to downloads here. Yep, she's got all sorts of download stuff in there. We'll go ahead and pull that over. And this is what you want to do. You want to immediately go get this data and, and transfer it as quickly as possible before this old drive just completely dies. So she's got a whole lot of stuff in desktop we were able to save. There is uh, over, you know, 32 gigs of data she had in our desktop folder. That's it. We now have her data. We might have lost one or two items because it couldn't read from the disk. But for the most part, we do have her data. Okay, we have, we now have the 500 gig SSD, the Samsung 870 Evo here. There we go, awesome. I think these holes right here on this caddy, are gonna line right up just right. Yep, Sh should be a relatively easy little upgrade. I have put this cage back on in case the customer wanted to not go through with this and pick it up but turns out she does want to go through with it so we're going to carry on four screws two on this side two on this side <clears throat> and this drive comes right out put this drive in the same configuration with the connectors facing the same way and So this has this plastic bit that I guess protects the 2.5 inch or the 3.5 inch drive from shorting out against the caddy, but we don't have to worry about that with this SSD. So let me see if I can get that off of here. Take that right off. Make sure that our holes line up, which they do perfectly. You know, I just get us four hard drive screws, four um, 2.5 inch drive screws, and we'll mount this. My trusty box of screws here. I'm going to put one screw into this front corner, put the other screw into this back corner. That's all we need to do. No sense in putting all four screws in. This drive is not going anywhere. Okay, let me just slide it back in. Just like that. Put our locking screw back in for the drive caddy. Plug our drive in. And I'm gonna do as I did before. I'm not gonna completely close this up until I know for a fact that that drive is going to be seen with the boot media that I'm going to be uh, installing on here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And I'm just going to plug in a mouse and a keyboard. Actually, I don't think I need a keyboard because it should just boot straight to the Windows 10 media because that's a blank drive there. So it's got no other drive to boot to but this thumb drive here. So what I'm going to do here is just raise this up enough where I can kind of see the screen and I'm going to go through the motions of booting up to the Windows 10 media until I get to the point to where I can see that SSD loading Windows 10 boot media here next and then we want to do custom and there's our there's our drive so it is being seen i can now shut this off and plug everything and now i know that i can go ahead and close all this up lock it down from that point we can install windows so i want to go ahead and get our cable over here routed properly like it was before yep now we can kind of close this guy up, snap it down, put all the ends there. Put our base back on here.
Okay, that's good enough. You don't need to over tighten those at all. All right, now I'm going to flip it up this way. And we're going to go ahead and put our rubber stoppers in where they were before. What the fuck is going on with that? I do not know. Turn it over, stand it up. And we can proceed to get Windows installed on this machine.